<clears throat> hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm your host, Diane Gibbs, and I am I am enjoyed. I am in, excited to enjoy my friend Fraser um, on the show today. So Fraser Davidson is an illustrator, he's an animator, he's a director, and he's just a, a really good with brands too and creating brands and stuff. So he does a lot of stuff. Oh, and Amir's here. So Thank you so much for coming, Fraser, and I appreciate you staying late at work so you can talk to us. Quite all right. All right, so give us a little bit. Um, we like your hat, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, give us a little bit of your background and where – did you know that you always wanted to do animation and that kind of stuff, or did you – what was your spin? When um, so I, I went to university to do a graphic design degree, and – Within that, you were kind of offered a number of multimedia um, uh, options that you could take. So there were kind of illustration, web design, um, After Effects in the very, very loosest sense of the word. This was 2001. So um, I, I went, I went to, I went to university on 9/11. <laughs> so oh, wow. yeah, uh, you know, everything was everything was different, um, and. Um, in my second year, the the um, the web design course was full up, so um, I ended up having to. I was fairly slack with it with regards to attendance, so I ended up having to kind of like pick my my um, you know um, secondary choices. So I, I got uh, motion graphics, and I kind of decided that uh, I really like that, and that that's that was my initial kind of entry point into into animation and. So it was, did you, were you really into movies or watching things like that? Or was that something that... No, I'm, 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 I'm not really a great film buff at all. It's, I think, uh, my first kind of year at university, I've always been, sort of spent um, my, my kind of time at school being very good at um, <laughs> drawing and very sort of uh, the, the sort of, you know, the aesthetic things in um, art and design. But I didn't really, I hadn't ever really kind of um, thought about any of them to any extent. Like there, were, there was no kind of um, conceptual basis to anything I did. Um, so it, it's kind of, yeah, so, so kind of doing, my, my first kind of year was quite, quite, quite difficult in that, in that way because I kind of came across this, this obstacle of um, having to sort of justify everything I did and explain why I'd done things and I had no... Uh, no sort of tool set to do that. So coming into my second year, when I had to take all these different kind of classes, I, my first one was illustration. I decided actually maybe I like illustration. I'm kind of better at this than all the design work I've done so far. And then I did motion graphics and I was like, well, it's kind of like I can do illustration and I have this, uh, this extra dimension. So, you know, with, with much design, it's, you know, you have a kind of a single kind of frame within which to, to make your case, to make your pitch, make your argument. And um, animation kind of gave this, had this extra dimension. Um, so uh, it kind of appealed to me because I wasn't very good at making my case within the, the, uh, the two existing dimensions. So um, it, yeah. seems, it seems hilarious because you clearly are really good at making your case now. Some drunk coworkers. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're clearly good because you have great clients. You're able to sell them on what you're doing. And some things are very different from what their normal wheelhouse would be. So somehow you've gotten really good. But so it, you didn't come out of the gate being able to like really sell. Do you think you in school you weren't able to sell your concepts or you just didn't think like that or what? No, I mean, all, all of those kinds of things aren't necessarily even kind of design related to it to an extent. I mean, if you're an art worker, those, those things are kind of secondary to what you're doing. It's much more the case, and maybe it's more the case in the US that you, there's more of an emphasis on justification and the, the pitch of your ideas. And really a lot of that kind of came um, long after, like, you know, six years after I'd even sort of was, was working in the industry. It was really kind of like leaving and setting up my own business that I became aware of, um, you know, basically the kind of roles of production in selling your ideas to commercial bodies and things. So um, I, you know, I, I spent kind of six years in a great job uh, with a company called Mainframe who had 
huge numbers of extremely talented people, but where my ideas were kind of sold and represented by producers. And, you know, I sort of spent a long time thinking, oh, I'm really dreading that about being a freelancer and then owning a company that I would have to learn how to do that myself. But actually, the sort of, I think, I think probably what most people find is that when, it's, when you're face to face with the person that you're trying to convince, it's much, much easier than trying to explain to a third party who's going to go and try and sell your idea, who doesn't necessarily <laughs> understand it any better than the client would if you were face to face. So it's so it sort of, all of that kind of stuff came much later to me. Um, yeah. Initially, um, I was more of an art worker. All right. So, so for the first six years, you think even after school, you were just an art worker? Yeah, I was, I was, I was um, extremely angry all the time. Um, if you read my Twitter feed, you probably think that's still the case. Um, but yeah, like I, I it was, you know, often we'd have these sort of fantastic kind of creative ideas that it's not that they weren't necessarily well presented, but they were pitched by somebody who didn't also believe in them. Right. Um, and now I don't, you know, we don't leave that to to chance like we when we kind of go to a client it's like we've got this great idea you know i don't have to kind of go to somebody go and tell them i've got this great idea um uh, which is much much easier well and it's also easier to communicate your own passion and excitement and to them and then they feel like you're part of their team and that you really want them to succeed and i think that's one of the things i love about you is that you do like in person you're just really real but you're also extremely passionate about what you what you're doing yeah, I mean, well, you know, we could be, we could all be stacking shelves, couldn't we? We could. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, all right. So, Mina had a question. So, I always like to make sure I get to everybody's questions in uh, as they come as much as we can. So, Mina asked. Um, so, Fraser, we were in college together at the same time. I was also a sophomore my first semester in art school when 9-11 um, happened. This changed my perspective at the very beginning of my career. I'm interested in hearing how this changed or altered or had any effect on your approach to your career. Do you think 9-11 did anything? Um, I, I mean, mean it, we know it did in, stuff. But in, for you. in real terms, yeah. I mean, in real terms, um, you know, with regard to just how it would have affected my career, in general, it might, it, I'm sure it must have done. If how it kind of affected me, uh, my response to it. It's a good question. I never thought about that before. But um, uh, you know, I guess, I guess I was 19 or something at the time. So I was, you know, you're you're, you're pretty stupid on the whole, aren't you? You know, you're not that kind of socially aware. But I think it it was, you know, my entire time at university, we sort of spent a lot of it just watching like you know 24 hour news because it was you know it wasn't until a year later that we went to war so it was this sort of ever-changing thing in the first year it did seem like there was uh you know there was a lot kind of going on in the world and things that i didn't really have any kind of um any sort of uh what's the word like kind of you know sense of just sort of general cultural sense of historical mm -hmm. sense of so that it, it did kind of probably later get me more interested in that and kind of the, you know, not, not necessarily in a kind of with, with regards to work, but I, I um, became much more interested in, I guess, the sort of the ideas of the enlightenment, you know, and um, people like uh, Christopher Hitchens and these sort of polemical speakers who, you know, spoke with real, in real defense of Western civilization and, and, um, yeah, like I say, the, the enlightenment and I kind of come to that's influenced my work subsequently, maybe didn't immediately. Um, yeah. Do you always have like, cause you seem like you seem like you like America pretty good. Um, so did, was that like, uh, had you always been or do you have family here or did you, was that, did that even affect your interest in the United mm. States at all? That's a very good question. Sorry. Um, that, is, that is a good, I have to actually think about these. Is a, yeah, I've, I've, always, I've always loved the US in, dif in different ways. Um, I, I, from being very young, I was really into kind of the sport. I played um, rugby here, which is quite a, a, a sort of, um, it's very much a sort of tertiary sport. It's not like one of, it's not like soccer, you know, soccer is the game. Um, everything else is very, very distant second. There's no kind of, you know, like basketball, hockey, football, well, 
hockey to a lesser extent, but there's, there's no kind of culture of that. There's one game you play here, and if you don't, you know, fucking forget it. Um, sorry. <laughs> Remember, my mom's watching. Yeah, so sorry. Um, so, I would, you know, if you, if you kind of grow up and you're like the, the sort of big kid who's, and, you know, there's no place for you on a soccer field. Like, you know, it's all skinny people with um, fine motor skills. Like, I don't have any of that. So, like, I like, I like tackling people. Um, so, from that, that was kind of my, that was why I initially kind of, this very sort of, you know, exotic alien kind of thing, you know, like this is pre-internet. So it was, um, I, I thought it was, you know, flashy and, you know, brightly colored and much more interesting than the kind of culture that I came from. I think subsequently, like I say, um, you know, it's sort of, I, I, I kind of learned to like the, the, you know, the idea of America as a concept is fantastic. Like we don't have these kinds of, um, you know, these, the, these sort of pure ideas anymore politically like it's much more pragmatic but i think the idea of kind of a you know an a, 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 you know civilization founded on the enlightenment became really kind of interesting and i guess you know i come from a country that's very moderate but very sort of um quite royalist and it comes from these very dated old-fashioned ideas and although maybe we you know we don't have lots of the kind of hangovers hangovers of um you know, political hangovers that overs that America's maybe, you know, ha, has now. We, we're kind of it's this sort of quite stagnant society, and I think America seemed very vibrant and interesting. And um, yeah, like you know, you, di you didn't have a, a you know three thousand years of you know inbreeding that was supposed to you know represent you. Like I find that quite embarrassing now. It's it's so um, yeah. Right. We have still have that too, you know, now we, we get, uh, at least in the deep South, you know, we get kidded about that quite a bit, Yeah, but we're not hopefully. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we don't have the 3000 years, you know, we think 300 years is way old here, <laughs> which is funny, I guess. Yeah. We have bars that old. <laughs> yeah, right. We don't have anything that old, but that's okay. Um, it's it's good to make our own way, I think, um, clearly. So so you work at Mainframe, and then did you meet Ben, and you were like, hey, let's go start our own place? Um, no, we, uh, we actually know each other from school. So um, we, uh, we knew each other from about age 11. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, I would have been, I'm a couple of years younger than Ben, but we kind of share a mutual best friend. And we all used to kind of pick on the same kids at school. Um, <laughs> and you try not to sugarcoat it. That's 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 essentially why. And we did we did paper rounds together and um, things like that. But we all come from a, a very What's tiny paper bit. rounds. Uh, like a paper boy. Oh, paper. Oh, okay. The, yeah. So um, yeah, we would uh, we would, Ben would um, along with my friend would sort the papers in the morning, and then I would come and pick them up, and we'd earn probably something like 12 the equivalent of 12 dollars a week in um uh and whatever we could steal from behind the cigarette counter uh, so were you riding your bike oh yeah okay yeah yeah um so that's how we know each other um ben worked for uh 10 years um in um online marketing while i was sort of kind of working in industry um after i set up on my own uh we um we, we kind of, you know, we'd often kind of talk about, you know, you know, kind of industry as a whole and that we have quite a lot in common. Um, and it, you know, the, the, the sort of industry that I'm from is quite not very, not particularly business savvy. And I guess kind of the people that I worked with, although incredibly talented, um, were, you know, quite um, happy to sort of, you know, live in a, uh, you know, live off their own kind of steam, work independently, not necessarily be part of a collective. And so, um, yeah, I, I kind of, I wanted to sort of do something a little bit more than that. And, uh, you know, between us, we, we kind of figured that we had just, just enough expertise to make that, that, that a reality. So then what year did Cub Studio get founded? Or was that when you were kind of like three people working together and then you did Cub Studio? So initially I was working with two other animators um, who, who we still work with today, but we were kind of worked as a collective. Um, at, 
it sort of became apparent that, you know, various people want to do different things. And I think I kind of wanted to, a collective is, you know, herding cats. Um, you, you know, you need kind of, um, you need structure in order to kind of, um, you know, order through structure uh, <laughs> um, to, to kind of create something that's a bit more meaningful and a bit more, um, yeah, has a sort of, you know, uh, you're able to do more through kind of actually uh, a traditional company structure. So we set up two years ago um, and yeah, now there's, uh, there's, five of us, I think, um, five of us kind of full time. And then we have a number of kind of um, animators and art directors that work with us sort of around us in the office. And um, we have sound people uh, and animators that work outside the office. So probably all in all, there'd be 10 or so people that we kind of work with on a consistent basis. So uh, then with the collective, Ben wasn't part of the collective. He was kind of yeah. doing his own thing or he was still working. He, in he was still working. Yeah. So then was that a big step? I mean, for you going from the collective, it was just really putting more structure to what you saw what wasn't working maybe as everybody kind of doing their own thing when we need help. Hey, I'll pull you into this project. But it wasn't really, um, it maybe wasn't facilitating. Everybody was kind of going out and grabbing their own things maybe. Yeah, you, and you can't, whilst you sort of can bring things back into the group, you can't really plan anything. You know, you, you, you say like, okay, we've got this big job coming in. I'm going to need three people on it. I'm kind of doing something else. I'm doing this. So it, you, you need, you know, a base facilities and people, you know, at your, <laughs> at your beck and call to, um, you know, be able to kind of basically, you know, do these things, produce these, the kind of work that we want it to be producing. Right. Okay. So, so you start this with Ben and um, two years ago. So what, so was it, um, I mean, you've known him for a long time, but this is the first time you've worked together. So sometimes those old friendships don't work real well. So what makes it work well with Ben? Like if somebody's thinking about doing this, I didn't ask this <laughs> question. Like so yeah, you can hear me. Um, uh, I think we're, we're quite different. Like I'm quite, be quite highly strong and um, reactionary and angry. Like I said, and Ben's a bit more mellow and a bit more you know, able to take his time uh, over kind of responding to clients and things. So there's, there's, there's that kind of aspect of things. I mean, just on a kind of practical level, the, the time you end up spending, the sort of, you know, the, the more, um, don't this to sound kind of silly, but like the more kind of successful you become, the more you have to deal with, um, you know, you very quickly can fill your time. And then after that, then you're sort of dealing with people who, um, you know, are sort of you, you're negotiating with as to whether or not you, you know, you have time to deal with them. And that in itself impinges on the time that you'd be using to create things. So basically right. I kind of wanted to manufacture a situation whereby we could um, and would take a lot of that off my shoulders and I can just kind of focus on, focus on producing good work, uh, which is, you know, where that then creates its own feedback loop. You know, we don't need to, I don't need to be selling myself. I don't need to be um, pitching to people particularly and I don't need to be, um, uh, you know, dealing with the sort of day-to-day -day kind of minutiae of just, you know, bigger projects, you know, with the, 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 the sort of, I'm sure you'll know, like the, the larger scale of project, the more stakeholders there are, the more mm -hmm. you have to kind of rationalize everything you do. And so the less you get fun. Right. Uh, yeah. So Ben kind of takes that. So that's, it's good to have somebody who maybe is an opposite, but really does understand the field and understand what goes into it. Right. You've made it sound like I could have said that in a more concise manner. No, I just, I just took what I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so um, one of the things I keep thinking about this, um, one of the videos that you have on your website, the simple cub, simple or simple yeah. or something which yeah. kind of, in a way. And I think you're great at this. Like you're great at this kind of a satire in a way because there's, Oh, it's really simple to just, you can put these people together and then it real, you know, it kind of like takes what your industry is 
and it sounds like the verbiage is like really like oh it's really easy all you do is put this one and two and and then you end up with a hundred or whatever but really it's like oh my goodness really all that comes into so it's really an educational piece and I don't know if that's like one of like these underlying themes that you have but you have a ton of educational the diving for the Canadian Olympics um, the football I mean, you have a ton of things that really um, it's not always satirical, right? I didn't feel like you were making fun of me because I didn't know about diving, but it was just, it's the, the, whoever's doing the voice, when they're coming in, when they're saying things, um, the way it's illustrated is fantastic, but it makes the education part be fun. And I guess that's one of the things I'm always interested in. And I don't know where I was going with that question. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's, the way I've always felt about education is that it, yeah, like it's, it's important to kind of impart interesting ideas or, or, or even boring ideas in an interesting way. Um, but I think, yeah, like most of our stuff is, is, is kind of didactic, but I think we like to, we like to think that we impart it in a, in a way that's fun and kind of, you know, delivers what, what we want to do with regards to the um, American football thing. You, you know, we, that has somewhat of a payoff in that the NFL came to us and said, you know, can, well, you know, are you able to kind of produce something similar for us that explains to a foreign audience what American football is, which, you know, is, we, we were talking about this earlier, like to us, that's kind of the, you know, a real kind of um, piece of praise in that, you know, we've taken American football, which to the sort of European audience can seem quite Byzantine and complex, but, uh, you know, uh, but there are sort of ways that you can, let people in that don't that, like you say like hopefully doesn't make them feel you know silly for asking the question or that it's something that's totally impermeable it's like you can know these kind of four or five things about it and that'll at least give you um you know a stake in watching it that'll make it interesting you'll know what's going to happen and then everything else you can pick up from there but um i'm glad well I'm, uh, if you think that I'm, I'm uh, oh yeah. i totally do so the american football the first one that you did not for the nfl that was yep. just a side project and just something you were doing as a like a demo reel uh yeah i mean well you never do it as just sort of a demo reel. it's 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 like well you're doing it but it was an in-house project that y'all did and you I mean, I know everybody does stuff like this, but you're doing it, you're working out ideas, you're working out perspectives, working out maybe illustration or other techniques, and then, but you're doing something because it's something you're passionate about. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's written like a kind of love letter, isn't it? To, I mean, it's like, it's me trying to persuade my friends that this, this girl I like is cool. That's basically what it is, isn't it? You know, it's, it's not, you know, it's, otherwise, it's, it's very easy to dismiss, you know, it's like, ah, it takes three hours and nobody does anything. There's 20, 20 minutes of action, which are all, you know, it's all true, isn't it? Like, it's very, so, you know, like you kind of want to go, yeah, but look, there's fucking cheerleaders and there's, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and there's, um, uh, and there's flyovers and there's, there's all this kind of pageantry around it. Like that's kind of what it's about. And I think, yeah, hopefully that's kind of the reason that the likes of um, the NFL get in, touch with us because we I think like we understand it in the way that that hopefully American people do I know that you know the college scene especially in the south is it's very much more kind of you know um nuanced and interest you know like every kind of college has their own kind of um you know very sort of bespoke old uh traditions and, right. and things like that and and that's kind of that's what makes it interesting more than explaining what you know third and two means right um, you can kind of do them at the same time yeah, so, yeah. for sure and yeah. so have you so Anne just said sec so of course i'm a sec fan grew up going to georgia games which you actually designed the the brand for for the new bulldog um and then um and then so have you been ever to an sec game <laughs> no, you you should, you should go. Sometime uh, my parents always get four tickets. I can get you two tickets, and they're always on the fifty. I've Mom? only I, I've only been to the south three twice, three times. So um, yeah, like uh, only for Creative South. So I, I, well, don't, I don't want I don't want you. 
<laughs> and, you, and you don't play football at that time of year. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's there the, is one in April. If they that? could ever move it back, you, it's like the A team versus the B team, you know? Right. I don't know what they call it at Georgia. G Day, maybe? Right. But, I see. It's not as fun. You would you would like the pageantry, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I want the I want the I want the full experience. I don't want the don't want the practicing. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. It is a it is different. Like I know a lot of people, and I'm not going to get on football, but I grew up, you know, going to games every weekend, and so it was like normal. But then, and I went to Auburn, and so I stayed within the SEC. That was one of my requirements, which really probably shouldn't be like that. You probably went to school because it was a good art school or something. Like that was not one of my. Um, I mean, it well, was a good art school, but it it kind of was. I mean, it was it. it we don't have the same kind of um, culture of, you know, school pride that you guys do. Like it's, it, 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 it just doesn't exist here. There's <laughs> certainly no culture of um, college sports. There are university sports, you know, I guess the closest thing to it would be um, any of the varsity Oxford and Cambridge stuff. But they're two universities that aren't really especially good at sports necessarily. They're quite good at rowing, but like, you know, they have, they play their, um, annual rugby game at Twickenham, which is an 80,000 seater stadium that is full of people, but they're not, <laughs> it's, I don't know, like it would be what, like watching kind of, you know, the biggest game of the year being between, I don't know, like Princeton and somebody else that without any of the big schools that actually are good at the sport. Right. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a sort of, there's a strange kind of relationship with college and sports here. It's much more about professional sports because the soccer players, become professional football players at like 12, 14 years old. Really? Wow. Yeah, they don't, they don't finish school. They don't, go to, they don't go to university or college or anything like that. So, all right. So let's get back to um, this love. So you're, um, you really enjoy football, American football, and you do this promo piece because I think this might be interesting. And I think this is what people, I think, need to see freelancers or people who are doing side projects that really want to kind of go out on their own maybe one day. So it's like this hope like that we would get something from, but you put everything in. I mean, there was, this was a, the, the guide to American football, the one that you created was um, kind of this leeway in and it's, I've seen a lot of people do this. You know, they have these side projects, they do them and then they're contacted by bigger agencies, but you do have to kind of be, know your industry and know that niche, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, but I mean, the, the way you get asked to do anything is by showing that you can do it. There's, there's nobody going to, um, you know, people like us that haven't made those things going, hey, can you make something like this? They come to us. And there's nobody, um, you know, that, that, that's, that's the same in every case. Like it's, if you, clients are, you know, it's difficult to persuade people to part with money, to, you know, for, for big projects. And in order to do that, you need to show them what you can do. And the added bonus of making something like, you know, in my case, the Guide to American Football is because it's something, it's something I love. So it's easy. Now, you know, like you say, like the diving thing, the um, hockey stuff that we've, we've gotten mm -hmm. to work with ESPN for baseball, all of that kind of comes as a direct you know, causal result of making something like the um, Guide to American Football. Um, the wouldn't we wouldn't be on those people's radars were it not for that that kind of work. And the kind of work that comes our way is the kind of work we like to we like to make. So it's it's yeah, it requires a certain kind of um, outlay. Uh, you know, it's a it's sort of a loss leader if you like. Um, you know, we have to produce something. It's an investment though. You know, right. nothing's wasted like that. You know, the, the pieces, everything that we make from that to the, the Trump stuff that we, we've done recently, it's all kind of for fun. And, but I mean, you know, people now trust us to kind of make those kinds of things for them. Right. Because a lot of times people it, within the industry that are not designers, that are not animators, that are not directors need an example to go from. And so that now you're giving them something you can tell them, oh, yeah, I could do that. But if you don't show them that you can do some of those things and they're not going to trust you. And this is big. And some of those bigger clients need to know that you can handle something. So if you had done something that was 30 seconds, like the Trump things, I think are, I mean, they're fast. Like, yeah. And, it, and it's, like, and it's not, it's not just that. They're, yeah. yeah like, they're like 10 seconds long, but it's, and they're, and we can turn them around incredibly fast, which isn't normally the case with animation. But I mean, 
it's it's not just that it's not just that these thing you know people are looking for people to produce these things is that you need to show people that these things are worth producing right and uh, you know just by virtue of the fact that it has um, a few million views shows potential advertisers that this is something that people will watch without advertising spend without kind of being pushed on Facebook like you know like this is the dawn of the internet this is still the wild west you know you can snapchat is you know the, the idea that like you know we're being, we're being asked to like you know what can you what can you play this way around what's vertical nobody's doing that at the moment so if you're if you've got half a mind like that is what you should be doing next you could be the snapchat provider of content mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it's all up for grabs. So, you know, show people, if you've got a, an idea, like, you know, there's, there's no harm in, you know, how much, for, mo for most kind of projects, it, it's not that great an outlay of effort and the potential kind of, you know, gains from that are significant. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big, big proponent of, you know, just, just make it and people will, you know, nothing's wasted you know, make it and people will kind of come and pay you to make it again. So do you think you worked in internet marketing? I think, is that what you called it? Right? Me? Yes. No, I didn't. Uh, my, yeah. my, my business model is Bended, yes. Bended. Okay. So some of that and having the views and getting that stuff, because when did you make the um, guide to American football? What year you think? Uh, might be three years old now. So it was before Cub Studio. Yes. But again, you do need traction. So I think some of that is that savvy maybe that he got from um, some of it. You just got a, a ton of views from it. And you do, you have to know what the industry and what the market and what the trends are. And you have to be able to see some of those things. But I think testing them in smaller bits is a way to do it. But you also have to have an overall, like the education, really, all those things, the diving, the hockey, the football are all in a way, educating for entertainment, right? Yeah, but uh, like I, I don't know anything about diving. I had to look all that stuff up right. on Wikipedia. I don't know anything but about that's diving. But every client, right? Course, we have to yeah. learn. But, but I mean, the thing, and but the other thing is, like, we didn't, we don't go into these things um, with the mindset. Look, um, uh, you know, how how is the market for this kind of thing? Like, what you know, I'm not, I'm not looking at kind of the, the general social media kind of um, investment budgets. I'm thinking like. I'd really like to make things about sport. How can we, how can we make sport interesting? Or how can we make, how can we have a take on sport that isn't the, the standard kind of um, the way that sports presented at the moment where everything is in 3D and bold and flashy and kind of, of, of incredible significance and importance. Cause it's not, it's sport. <laughs> no, nothing will happen as a result of anything that happens in sport. It's all just entertainment. So like, let's treat it as such. Um, that that's kind of you know but I mean if you're into politics or if you're into I don't know just anything like if you're into scuba diving you could you know you can and, and art you can present these things in interesting ways that other people might not have thought of because they're not artists you know that's that's kind of the point so it's more about communicating something in a new way that get that is something that other people enjoy, but it's really something you enjoy. You're not actually picking it because you didn't like football. You were picking it because you did like football. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not there. I don't, I, we don't, we're not looking at that going, Oh, the NFL is a, you know, or professional football is a big market. We should be getting in there. It's like, no, like I, this is something I love and that I, you know, want to kind of express and show other people that they should love that as well. Right. And you know, look at a, just the, the posters behind you, you know, like it, about all different kinds of things by artists who um, are interested in different kinds of things. And like, it, it, you know, uh, so for instance, you know, the huge market now that exists in art posters that maybe didn't exist 20 years ago, you know, if you like any TV show, if you like any film, you know, you can purchase kind of goods that probably, probably infringe on that copyright. But you know, you know what I mean? Like, um, that's kind of how you can, you know, express in, in your enjoyment of something and encourage other people to, to, to do the same. Right. So it's really about knowing you and knowing what you're passionate about and yeah. then just riding your 
you know, flying your freak flag, if that's what it is, or riding your red wagon and just going with it and going for it. Yeah, well, I mean, you, especially in the US, you spent all this money on a design education to do what you wanted to do. You've come so close to doing exactly what you want to do. Like, why would you stop at the subject matter and do right. and lay out books or whatever? Like, find, you know, do the thing that you exactly want to do and get paid for it. Right. All right. Well, let me get to some of the other questions. So, um, all right. So do you ever work out new styles or new techniques in side projects? Is that where you do that? Or do you just do that on your own in practice? Um, I, th I mean, I th pr probably what you see on our website is quite a narrow technical sliver of what of what my background represents like I did a lot of kind of you know film 3d green screen compositing I did lots of music videos music videos with like Santa Gold and people like that so I've worked with uh, lots of stuff in sport that's sort of separate to that but I like worked in lots of different industries that with um you know, much more kind of high-end visuals, I guess, as well. <laughs> but I find that stuff incredibly boring. I find it really slow and kind of yeoman-like. Um, I think what we do now is very immediate, quick turnaround, and hopefully has a voice that, that's expressed by us and not by some creative director so much, although that's always going to be the case. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I think in that sense, yeah, what, what we do is quite representative of what we want to do and not what, what we potentially could do. So styles, in terms of style, so something like the Trump thing that we've done recently, that's a direct response to a piece of technology, a plug-in that came out that is incredibly good at, uh, incredibly useful for um, animating faces. When, when animating, the hardest things to do are people, like by a long way, because we're complex. We have many kind of rotational. Right. Um, so there's sort of the, the, the technology that's now available to allow animators to, um, you know, create kind of interesting nuanced characters is very valuable and kind of, in my opinion, quite underused. Um, and so we wanted to kind of take this piece and go, okay, like how can we, how can we take this piece of technology that basically speeds up what we do by a real kind of significant margin and how quickly can we make something? And we'll just take, take a character, have him say something, you know, silly and then kind of cut away from him. And I get, you know, Donald Trump's the perfect. Somebody know. asked in the chat if you were a Trump supporter and I'm like, I don't think they've seen the videos, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd never have an excuse to, I couldn't wear this outside in the UK. So I'm wearing it on the, <laughs> I'm wearing it on the podcast. Um, so yeah, so, it, so stylistically, I guess, it, you know, we're kind of quite, quite influenced by technology is what I'm trying to say there. Um, so when something kind of pops up in the, you know, in the, in the industry, that's going to could potentially be a game changer. We must kind of try that out and see how we can make it work and sort of, you know, push it to it till it breaks. Um, so that was kind of the, that was the, the reason behind something like the Trump thing. Like, can we, can we kind of generate something very quickly, have a quick turnaround in ways that animation currently doesn't exist. Right. Um, unless you, unless you're South Park, which, you know, it's the, the thing that turns around in six days, but, but we can, we can make a Trump thing in about 90 minutes, but he hasn't fucking said anything in the last couple of weeks. That's as bonkers as some of the things he said in the past. So we've just been using old material, but um, yeah. But so, so really these are about 10 seconds and it's pretty flat and then it'll zoom in on his face, um, his hands, the little hand one's funny, um, but it's just taking his audio. And then I guess instead of, so, I guess when I'm saying what I hear, how I can use that because I don't, I'm not an animator, but it's like if there's a piece of technology, maybe there's a new brush for me. So I, instead of just playing, practicing, I'm actually going to make a project 
that will show humor if that's something that I want to get into, if I want to do more yeah. things that are humorous or if I want to do more things that are in, uh, illustrations or whatever, then I'm going to take this opportunity instead of just making something to just put in an old file or a test file. I'm actually going to have a project and going to share it out. And again, it could allow for more things to come out. One, you could do more political maybe things. You could also do more things on, um, you know, uh, people that were uh, famous people that were just in the spotlight. You know, it, there are lots of different avenues. You're not thinking about it in that ra range. You're actually thinking about it to do as a technology, you know, figuring this thing out. Like it, I, and I don't know After Effects. Is that what you're in? You're in, oh. Well, well, look, I mean, let me, let me dig down into the file. I can't show you everything at once here because I'm, I'm on two screens. But this is kind of, this is a, this is a, what, what a kind of um, a Trump file looks like. And if I can see if I can find a way to switch between screens easily, almost certainly not. But um, uh, yeah, I can't. Oh, hang on. Here we go. Here we go. So let's have a look. Here we go. So on the one side, here's, here's a kind of timeline. So we have this little section here is the intro. This is the kind of body of the animation. And this is the outro. Um, now, if I switch back here to the screen, I'm going to show you how we can dig down into the file. So this is kind of the main picture. So this is kind of everything that's happening. If I open this up, you can kind of see within this uh, this frame that these are the kind of controls that I'm using. This is the, um, uh, uh, what's it called? I want to get this right because somebody put a lot of effort into this. Joysticks and sliders plugin. So this allows me to control Donald's head um, his arms are controlled using a system called Duic. So if I, if I just bring up, here we go. So you can see how his arm movements there are kind of controlled by these keyframes. So I can move his, move his hand up and down. Whoop, it's going to flip inside out. But what we can do here, I can move his head using this kind of this uh, this joystick stick here. I can move his head from side to side. I know that's going to look low res at this. But still, we get it, yeah. You get that. So then that's that's one of the kind of levels here. His eyebrows are controlled by this thing. So I can have his eyebrows up. I can have his eyebrows down. I can keyframe those kinds of things. I can have him, basically, this is kind of allows him to blink. Mm. And uh, these other things sort of control his body. But that's, so he's a very sort of rudimentary, simple kind of character. Um, you know, his, this is his torso. And he's got a head. Everything else essentially kind of works off uh, the head. So oops, if I can show you inside, inside his head, uh, if I can find that. Um, yeah, so you have all these things again. And the main thing is kind of taking, taking the clip and kind of cycling through all these mouth positions to kind of have him talk. If I go into his pre-mouth thing you can see that there's only it's very simple there's only kind of 13 mouth positions here oh cool so that's kind of what mm -hmm. he looks like under the hood um and that so you know the mouth will take about 15 20 minutes to kind of animate and the head as you can see is pretty straightforward in terms of its um uh, the way that's animated and then everything else you know so you can knock this out in kind of 90 minutes um he's he's, he's pretty simple so Stephen wants to know if you've tried Go Animate. Um, yes, I have. I haven't tried it actually, to be perfectly honest, but I've, I've seen it. Um, it, it. It kind of. Long story short, it doesn't kind of fit into our workflow especially well. But I, I, I will check it out. These are so, things plugged directly into After Effects that have, that sort of allow us to make these. So bef before that um, joystick plugin, you were having to do those eye movements manually it would just mean sort of multiple yeah multiple kind of keyframes so you you know instead of the head kind of if you notice his head is kind of made up of lots of different kind of elements so he's got mm -hmm. hair he's got a chin he's got eyes he's got eyebrows you can parent those things to each other in a way that you can make them all turn at once but actually you know if you turn your head you want the nose the end of the nose to move further than right. you know, the top of the nose so that you kind of get a sense of three dimensions, mm -hmm. sense of parallax. Um, and 
that's quite a fiddly, without getting into the technicalities of it, that's quite a fiddly thing to do using lots of different layers. And this, this plugin sort of allows us to make that incredibly quickly and duplicate that rig dozens of times. So how many, um, and by doing the mouth once, you can actually, because you're doing all the sounds, um, you're making all this, those, and since it's always, you're always using Donald, um, and because it's the series, you've actually created it once, and then however many times, it's like, uh, you can reuse it. It's like, I don't know, I haven't, don't have a good example, uh, analogy. You, so you the can. plugin was joysticks and something, sliders? Um, joysticks and sliders, yeah. So, um, Blake says he hasn't seen much of your work. He's jetpacks and roller skates. He's a great illustrator as well. Um, with key lines, is the cause is it because the key lines get can get messy? And I, that's kind of one of the other things. How long would that take you before that plugin? Um, I guess something that you might create in the course of something like that you might that might take you the course of like 90 minutes to make would probably take you a day to make previously. wow that's um, huge then not really because it's complicated but because there's uh just a lot of kind of fiddly things that it immediately kind of removes from that equation I guess. all right so so this wasn't necessarily a new style you were working out you were actually working out uh technology but then you decided to do this side project how often does that happen in at Cub Studio? Uh, frequently. I mean, we, you know, so many more people now are kind of literate in After Effects. And, you know, if you're quite, um, you know, if you're, if, once you're literate, it's very easy to kind of learn how to do simple iconographic kind of animation. And, you know, that's good enough for lots of people to kind of win win jobs. Um, I mean, we, we kind of create lots of little bits and pieces. I'll tell you what, I'll share my screen one more time. Um, and a lot of it kind of goes on our dribble account. So something we've created today is just a very quick animation of a um, footballer kind of knocking a ball around. And that's sort of a, a test of um, the Duick rig for something that we're kind of planning in the next few weeks. Um, but it, you know, a lot of these things. So uh, again, like here's Trump's head. Here's how he kind of all the individual elements of that move and you know um, rotate and move and kind of uh, are masked in different ways. Um, you know, this is kind of an early early character test. You know, getting his arms moving. So we kind of create lots of these things and post lots of little little bits and pieces. This is again the same kind of thing. Um, but we do this all the time. So um, I don't know where that. Um, well, oh well, never mind. Oh, what do you want to see? The baseball player sliding in. The baseball player sliding in. Let me just do this. So one of the things that really I like about that. So the Trump is is different. You're actually your styles are are very different, and I think your your brands are amazing. But the so one thing I love, and I've seen this in a lot of Cub Studio pieces. I think is that mm. kind of and I don't know what you call it, but it's transitions where you transition from one thing and it actually spins like either 45 degrees or 90 degrees or 180 degrees, or maybe it's even spinning 360, but it's really neat. But the one thing I like about the baseball thing is it, if you watch that one, there's a lot of texture in that, um, those ESPN, that whole series. Mm -hmm. And to get that texture just adds that retro in a way effect. It also adds, um, instead of it being so crisp and clean sometimes, and I think you do this with um, like in the, in the diving one or even in the one about um, like the, I, I think it's football. It's people at the end, the, the splashes of lights that really gives, I love this one, that baseball with the, the guy who was the cleats. That's hilarious. But there is, there's humor in all these. And I just think they're, if you weren't, yeah, <laughs> that one. It was. It does. It tells this funny little story that unless you know that player, um, you know you don't know. But yeah. it's like taking these little pieces and sharing them. Um, I don't know if you're sharing them prior. You're sharing some things, but they're they're your. I don't know your behind the scenes kind of stuff. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of it's kind of 
a lot of it's just for sort of, um, you know, we sort of share it to, I guess, gain, garner a little bit of attention, but some, and some of it's used to kind of direct that attention towards clients. So um, this piece that we did for ESPN, a lot of these um, things, uh, we would later kind of post links to the, um, the actual full pieces. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's not just that, like, it's just kind of interesting to sort of gauge reaction with various things and try out little bits and pieces here and there um you know like the the, the trump thing i guess they're kind of they just they just sort of serve as little you know social media tasters to things that we're doing and might bring audiences to us that wouldn't otherwise necessarily um see our work right so what about like the united kingdom where the the bar comes up under the eye in <laughs> yeah well that didn't work did it uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was just something that we kind of made. I think this was probably made the day of the referendum. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but we yes. shot ourselves in the face um, uh, by voting to leave the European Union, which is a terrible idea. Um, but, yeah, you know. Um, so, yeah, we made, it, we made a couple of these little things. I think there's another one here. Here we go. Yep. So, um, I want to be in the EU. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're little bits and pieces that we make, you know, just, I don't know, just sort of when, when you get a spare second, but it's, you know, it, like I say, nothing's wasted. It's all there to kind of, you know, build sinew um, and you know, lots, of, lots of these things act as reference on, on projects that come up later. Um, yeah. So. so Esteban wants to know if you uh, do it, I don't know how to say that, D-U-I-K. Yeah. And not rubber hose. So again, you guys are speaking your own language here. Yeah, um, oh. we, do, we, we have used rubber hose. Rubber hose is fantastic. We have an example of rubber hose here. Um, so rubber hose, uh, it's incredibly clever, <laughs> but it's it, it puts a huge strain on um, parts of the, uh, mm. the parts of the program. So it creates a huge amount of mass, basically. Right. And so if you're kind of using lots and lots of characters, it will slow down. Here we go. Here's an, an example of rubber, rubber hose. So very elastic kind of um, fun characters, incredibly easy to use. I can't recommend it enough, but we found in a few instances that it can be quite fiddly to, here's another character that uses some rubber hose. It can be quite fiddly to um, uh, create multiple characters and have them move it'll slow the computer down quite a bit a lot more so than do it okay so just more efficient is yes do it's more efficient um and if, if it you know if you're on a kind of project that has a deadline it's um you know it's in, sort of imperative that you're able to alter things very quickly and um yeah rubber hose will get there i'm sure the guy who makes it and again i'm really sorry i forgot his name um but he's uh you know it's when you sort of see the the machinations of it it's incredibly clever but it's it's sort of too clever for the program at the moment <laughs> um but sort of stressing the cpu right so uh doc reed also he wanted to say i love how well he didn't say that part he said i love how clever and witty the work is so that's also something maybe it seems like a lot of your work is like that but again you're probably showing that work on your on Cub Studios site, you might not be showing all the work that you get, but you want to get more witty work. So, or maybe not, but it seems like you do. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's always an editorial process, I guess, with all this kind of stuff. A lot of our, a lot of our money <laughs> into the company comes from, uh, you know, banks and um, I guess social media companies who uh, f f either way don't want their work publicly shown it's sort of internal or it's they don't want it sort of necessarily right. associated with people like me so they, they might politely request that we don't kind of show it but um uh yeah a lot, a lot of the work comes that way and you know you you either choose that it's not the kind of thing that you want to be presenting yourself as producing but you know as much as you know as much as like you want to be sort of known as a director we we very much want to our clients to feel like we're a safe pair of hands and that we will you know we we just recently we've had a sort of big well known social media company come to us saying that they've got these projects that um 
uh, they had a company, another company kind of working on and, um, uh, you know, for whatever reason, the project's gone wrong and we kind of in inherit the project and it's our job then to just sort of make it very, very easy for them to come back to us and say, oh, we need this change, we need this language, we need this kind of thing. And when you often, you know, it's very, and like I said, kind of, I made the point earlier when, you know, part of the reason that Ben's here is, is there to oversee this kind of thing. I'm going to have to talk to you in a minute. I'm sorry. Thanks. Um, part of the reason that uh, Ben's here is uh, that he can, you know, he's sort of able to have a sort of a view of projects like this and he can, um, you know, when it comes to kind of planning for voiceovers, language variations, all these kinds of things, he's there and able to um, oversee that kind of thing so that, you know, we, me and the other designers can very kind of quickly implement those things and often we'll look at kind of some of these projects that we sort of inherit in that way and you can see from the project for us that they don't stand a chance of being able to deliver that kind of service to their customers. Right. So we didn't get through. I actually did create a whole list of questions and we got through like half of them. So. <laughs> That's because I was talking. No, it's <laughs> great. So um, you actually do a lot, of, a lot of brands. I'm just going to have to have you back on if you don't mind coming back on. Um, but like there were... I wanted to know, I had like nine and a 9.5. So it was about telling these stories and, and kind of what stories you tell. And I don't know, you know, if some, a big company comes to you and says, Hey, we like what you do. We kind of have an idea or do they just say, Hey, we want to work with you. This is what we want to do. We want to increase our viewership or we want to, you know, I don't know what they're coming to you saying. It all, um, it all varies. Um, so I'm going to answer this really quickly for you. Uh, it all varies. Like some of our, Clients come to us, traditional advertising clients come and they will have very prescriptive mood boards, storyboards, that kind of thing. Other times we we're dealing, we, we're working with a bank at the moment who um, you know, social media is fairly new for them and they'll come to us and say, what can we do with this content? Like, how can we make it fun? So it kind of runs the gamut. So, all right, well, we'll just have to do a part two because uh, you got to go home at some point. So does your normal day, do you come in late and you stay late or do you like to leave and go home? Um, uh, well, so we normally leave about 5.30. We actually, we, I mean, I, I went out prior to this and came back to the office. Um, so uh, we, uh, yeah, we normally kind of, I've worked at places and uh, I'm sure there are lots of people that work in advertising and um, uh, PR and whatnot where, you know, the standard model is to work until eight or nine. I've worked in those places. I'm not doing it anymore. Um, we leave about 5.30, 6. We get in at 9.30, we leave at 5.30. That's great. That's terrific. And no, I didn't really ask if home was overrated, but a lot of times animators will be more in like night shifty kind of people um, or some of the animators I know. Yeah. So, so uh, Yeah, no, I've only ever worked with kind of, you know, um, night shift people really like a lot of, a lot of my friends at college were, you know, they'd get up at midday by which time I'd finished my day. I was sort of six till midday and they were kind of midday till midnight or whatever. But, um, yeah, I, I can't think properly after about four thirty. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I have like a lull at about two thirty. That's my, like, I kind of need to talk to somebody else. So that's why I do this about this time. So I want to make sure that um, everybody knows um, how to follow you and how to um, reach out to you. So on Twitter, you can follow Fraser uh, at Frazdav, F-R-A-Z-D-A-V. I'm putting this stuff in the chat and it'll also be in the, um, and uh, and I don't have a Vimeo, so if you want to send me a Vimeo, that's the only thing I didn't get. That's, um, uh, let me do that. If, if you want to know where all the Trump stuff is, it's all the Trump facts and s dot com. You can watch them there. So then Vimeo is Vimeo dot com slash Cub Studio, and then you can also I shared this earlier Cub Studio dot com. I'm going to share it again. I'm trying to get all of them in here. Um, Dribble, you can actually find is both Cub Studio and Fraser Davidson, both. So there's both of those. And then Instagram is uh, similar. You have Cub Studio and then also Frazdab. So, <laughs> Shouldn't be following my Instagram. <laughs> but that's it. Uh, it's it's most pictures of me drunk. <laughs> Well, there was, um, you're, but you're funny there too. I remember um, one time in the summer you were um, renting a house or something and it looked um, 
incredible. And um, you were like, I have to spend all week here. Can you believe it? Uh, so, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it looked beautiful. So um, <laughs> check them out. Oh, and there's one other thing. So if you guys want to you kind of give us a little back end, you can also check his Skillshare class out. And so here's the link to use if you want to do that. And it's skl.sh slash Fraser. F R A S E R underscore S K. So check that out and maybe you'll get to be a little, you can, you can practice and play around with some things. So we also talked about the do it and that's D U I K. And then, um, yeah, let me, let me give you a link to that. That'd that, be great. And then the joysticks and sliders plugin, which sounds like that is like a miracle worker. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it sort of has a, a there's a fair amount of, um, you know, pre-knowledge required to work it. But I think if sure. you're kind of interested in this kind of thing, it's um, uh, well worth taking the time to uh, learn how to use it. <laughs> so Doc says he's sending you his monies now. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> I get 10 bucks for everybody that signs up that way. So, you know, if everybody does that, that'd be, you know, about, like, that'd be like 60 bucks. So, uh, yeah. This is joysticks and sliders there as well. Awesome. I'm going to um, grab I don't get any money for those two things, though, by the way, but you should, you should buy them anyway. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Fraser, thank you so much, and I hope I get to see you at Creative South. And sometime in the fall, if you want to come to a Georgia game, you will have to plan it out. But um, That's good. Um, I'm sure my family would be happy to uh, share their two extra tickets. So right. it's really great seats to just let you know, and you get to – I'm there's, sold, Dan. I'm sold. You don't need there's to. There's some drinking that goes on. And my parents are really fun. And my dad's hilarious. <laughs> so he tells a lot of stories, which I think is always good. He's a good Southern gentleman. Excellent. Anyway, um, but thank you. It's always good to talk to you. And I can't wait to see you in April. And um, good luck. Uh, not good luck, but congratulations on your upcoming nuptials. So. Ah, oh, thank you very much. It's very and, kind. Yeah. Nice and, well. All right. Well, guys, I will not see you next week. I'm actually taking the week off. I was going to do a rapid recharge, but I've kind of had a crappy week last week. So we're going to take a break. Um, Terrence Tang was going to be on, but he had knee surgery or he has knee surgery coming up on Tuesday. So you can say a prayer for him. Um, so we decided to change him to the next week. So he will be one week out of knee surgery, one week in a day. So. Uh, check it out. I don't even know. I guess that's the 21st because I'm good with my math. So I will see you guys back on the 21st. Thank you guys so much for coming. And um, I hope you guys have a great week. And Fraser, you too. You too. Bye, guys.